Hello viewers and welcome back to another episode of the Model Guy and in this episode we will be finishing up the build of the Airfix 124 Typhoon. In the last episode I finished up painting the main colors on the Typhoon and now we're going to move on to weathering. The first step I always do when weathering is to seal the aircraft in at least two layers of clear lacquer gloss and what this is going to do is going to protect the paint underneath and also give me a safety net so if there's any issues with the oil paints going on top of the lacquer it can simply be wiped off without damaging anything. Once the clear coat has a full day to dry, I'll start applying oil washes. And how I do this is I simply mix cheap oil paints together with some enamel thinner. Once the oil paints had about 20 minutes to dry, I'll come in with a shop cloth and start wiping it away. If it seems like it's sticking, I'll add some thinner to the shop cloth just to help wipe it away. But if you use too much thinner, it'll completely delete the wash and you have to start again. Once the wash has had two days to dry, I'll come in and I'll start adding more weathering with oils to the aircraft. The nice thing about working with oil paints for weathering is if you're not happy with how it's looking, you can just come in and wipe it all away and start again. That's the nice thing about the safety net from that gloss coat. If you want more randomness with your weathering, you can just use the splattering method I'm using here. The molding for the landing gear was horrible, and you can see here there's a full millimeter of offset between the two halves of the mold. And to make that worse, it's also too large to fit into the hub of the tire. The landing gear struts were going to require a lot of work, but another area I wasn't expecting a lot of work was the propeller blades. After some filling and a lot of sanding, my mojo was starting to decrease a lot with this kit. And if the landing gear legs weren't bad enough, the kit's barrels weren't looking much better for the 20mm. The easiest solution was to dry fit the cannon fairings and to order a Model Master barrel set. One thing I have trouble with building models is having realistic looking tires, so with this model and the tires being so big I would have to put in some extra effort to make them look decent. So what I've done is I've actually painted the tire flat black and then started to highlight the outside with rubber black which is a bit lighter. For the chrome effect on the landing gear strut I've simply used a Molotov chrome pen and painted the cylinder itself to have that nice reflective shine. The nice thing about the chrome pens is they're very easy to use and because they're self-leveling you can flood it on quite a bit and still have a nice clean finished look. Airfix does redeem themselves though with their fit on the landing gear legs because this is a very tight fit and it's almost machined so you don't even have to use glue to get these to sit properly. But it does leave you with a seam and a nasty spot to clean up. Now for the part of the build that actually restored my mojo and got me energized to keep going. This is the Model Master gun set. So the only modifications you have to make to the kit are to clip 4mm off the front of the cannon fairing, clean it up, and then you can just simply super glue the cannon in place. I found it easier to cut 3 mils off the cannon fairings and then simply sand my way back until I had a nice smooth clean joint. best money spent on this model. I'm sure cleaning up the kit spring on that barrel would have been what Nightmare Fuel is made from. With the mojo flowing again, it was time to go back to the tires and try to add some more character and depth to them. With Mr. Color's tire rubber as the base for this, I started adding more Vallejo model color paint on top using different shades of German black, rubber black, and flat black just to try to change some tones. These were very heavily thinned down colors, so it took a lot to get them to build up. But as they start to dry, you can see that there's a little bit more flavor going on here. In the end, this was a big experiment, and I think there was probably about seven different colors I used just to get this effect. Once everything was dry, I came back in with the Mr. Color tire rubber in very, very thin coats and started to blend everything back together. Once everything had dried, I finished it off with my own custom acrylic dust textures. And if you're wondering what that looks like, look up Night Shift and he will tell you everything you need to know about it. With the rubber textures masked off, it was a simple case of coming in with Mr. Color Aluminum to spray the hub. 
To bring out the detail in the hub, I'm going to use Tamiya Panel Liner just to bring out all those little things that you don't see when it's all silver. I didn't think that the tire portion of this build would take up as much time as it did, but I'm quite happy with the results. So I'm going to try to show you every little thing that I was doing just to inspire you to try some different things with your model building, just because it may result in something that you really like. While this panel wash is drying and I'm getting ready to wipe it off, why don't you post in the comment section after you've hit like and subscribe and let us all know what you've done with a model that was different and worked out for you or something that you tried and absolutely hated. Let us know. Now that I'm happy with the rubber on the tire and the hub, I've decided to come in and just touch up the wheel nuts and the spindle nut on there as well with some steel paint. Now that all the weathering on the aircraft is complete, it's time to come in with a matte coat to seal everything in and to get rid of that shine. I do this in just a few thin layers to get rid of the shine rather than one thick one. All that hateful sanding and filling for the cockpit plug plays out because the canopy just simply drops in place. With Airfix's bombs lacking any type of texture on them, I decided to add that missing casting effect by mixing Tamiya Extra Thin Glue with their gray surface putty. Once the glue and putty have mixed to make this type of texture, I then use an old brush to dab it on the bomb. And this dries pretty quick, so what happens is as you're mashing it on there, you're going to get that cast effect. Once again, it's easier to do this in a few thin layers than one thick one. I expected more detail with a 124 scale bomb, so I decided to replace the block for alignment with the model and actually added the shackles with some solder wire. I plan on hanging one bomb from the aircraft model and the other one will be on display as part of the museum diorama I'm building. Since I was already building shackles for the bomb, I decided to add detail by creating the fuses for the noses. Because the kit spinner is kind of a blobby mess, I decided the best way and easiest way would be to use my Dremel as a mini lathe and use my knife to define the pattern. If this is something you decide to try, make sure you're wearing safety glasses because if that tip breaks off the knife, the safety squint is not going to cut it. Things continue to escalate as I decide to put the safety cotter pins in the fuse by using some thin solder wire. I simply loop the soldering wire, put it through the fuse, and then bend the tabs up as you would with a real cotter pin. And now with just a lick of aluminum paint, we're ready to move back to building the model. I didn't like how flat Airfix's 20mm cannon shells are molded, so I decided just to keep the canisters empty instead. Surprisingly, this kit lacks any detail in the wingtip lights, so I decided to make bulbs on soldering wire just to give it a little bit more depth to the lens. Once I let the glue dry, I just sprayed it with some accelerant and dipped it a few more times until I got the thickness I wanted. And then I simply dipped it in a clear red or green for the marker lights. With the bulb glued in place, it's simply a case of putting the lens over top, and voila, a little bit of detail to make it more interesting to the eye. The gun bays are surprisingly empty even with the cannons in there, so I decided to add the airlines that activate the solenoids to fire the cannons. 
And with those last few details going into place, this model build is coming to a close. What started on January 1st in the New Year finally ended on March 14th on Pi Day, and I'm not sure if I would do another 124 kit. The problem with the kit size itself is that every little thing you do is going to stand out. You can't hide it with weathering or textures or anything like that. So you have to make things more interesting because you're going to be able to see them. As for building another 124 Airfix kit, I can't see myself doing one in the near future, but it's not because it's a bad kit. It's just one that requires so much more work to have it look good in the end. If one of their new Hellcat kits fell into my lap at a decent price, I would at least have a better understanding of how much more work I was getting myself into, and I think I would have a better kit in the end because I would go into it knowing what a challenge it was going to be. That's enough rambling for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm the Model Guy, and I will see you next time.